people often ask, who was Jesus really? And what was he all about? And there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. So I thought I'd better say something just to clear it up. Jesus was a first century Palestinian Jew who was announcing that this was the time for God to become king. He was plugging into expectations that had been building for a long time for the Jewish people as they knew that life wasn't the way it should be and they knew that their God, who was the creator God, had promised to come back and sort it all out one day. And Jesus was saying, the time is fulfilled. God's kingdom is here. This is the time for God to become king. And he was going about doing things that said, this is what it's going to look like. And he was telling stories which said, it's not going to be quite like you thought, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like somebody sowing seed and half of it seems to be wasted, but then there'll be a great crop. Or it's going to be like a father who had two sons and dot, dot, dot. And Jesus told these stories to say, it's happening now, doesn't look quite like you imagined, but stick with me and you'll see this is how it's going to be. So the first thing is Jesus was announcing God's kingdom. But the second and in the middle is that Jesus was embodying God's kingdom. He was doing things, celebrating parties with all the wrong people, uh, sinners as they called them, people of bad character, but who were ready to latch on to a message of forgiveness and new starts and new creation and new life. And so Jesus was doing things like that and healing people of all kinds of diseases as a sign, this is what it looks like when God becomes king and new creation really begins to happen. But the trouble is, if he was embodying God's kingdom, then the forces of chaos and destruction and death were striking back pretty hard, which is why the focal point of the four stories about Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, is when Jesus goes to his death. Jesus seems to have believed it was his vocation to embody a moment when God would come in person and take the weight and horror of the world's evil and shame and sin and death itself upon himself and exhaust it. And the sign that he'd done that, the further embodiment of the kingdom, was that three days later he was alive again in a transformed new body. It was the same body and yet somehow different because it had gone through death and out the other side. Jesus was embodying the launching pad of God's new creation. And when we ourselves get to know Jesus for ourselves, and when we talk to other people about him, and when we try and live the kingdom way, we too are supposed to be embodying the kingdom in a way that makes it attractive and, and, and winsome to people who are looking on from the outside. So the third thing is that Jesus was also enabling God's kingdom because after he was raised from the dead he sent his spirit upon his followers and told them to get on with the job of doing in the world what he had been doing close up and personal among his own people and that's the power and the promise of the kingdom today that when we pray thy kingdom come we are really praying that all that Jesus did will somehow be channeled through his spirit, through us, through all his people, out into the world, to our friends, to the wider world, to people we maybe don't know about at all, but who need to see the signs of the kingdom in God's world. So Jesus was announcing the kingdom, he was embodying the kingdom, especially in his death and resurrection, and by his spirit, he's enabling the kingdom. And that's the promise which he holds out to us today.